Welcome to Tobamori. Come with me as I travel back in time to revisit Staffa Island of the Inner Hebrides in Argyll and Butte, Scotland. Staffa is positioned 10 kilometers west of Mull and 9 kilometers northeast of Iona. The Vikings named the island Staffa, which comes from the Old Norse, which means stave or pillar island. Staffa's column-like appearance reminded them of their homes, which were built from vertically placed tree logs. The rugged coastline is breathtaking against the blue of sky and ocean, I think of all who visited this island since it first came to prominence in the late 18th century after a visit by the English naturalist and botanist Sir Joseph Banks. It was August 1772. On his way to Iceland, Sir Joseph Banks and company stopped by the Isle of Mull and were welcomed and entertained by Maclean of Drummond who happened to mention the island of Staffa. The very next day, Sir Joseph Banks and company set out from Tobamori. They were overwhelmed by the beauty of the columns and of the island's main sea cavern, which Sir Joseph Banks renamed Fingal's Cave, a nod to the Scottish legend of a king, Fingal and his poet son, Ossian. Many visitors followed to experience Stava's extraordinary splendor, including Robert Adam, Sir Walter Scott, John Keats, J. M. W. Turner, William Wordsworth, Jules Verne, Alice Little, David Livingston, Robert Louis Stevenson, and Queen Victoria. Many have said that Mendelssohn came the closest to capturing the magic of Staffa in his Hebrides Overture. For me, the pathway lined by green grass, the blue sky, and the wind that carried the smell of ocean offered a gentle welcome to an island that was forged in ancient times by lava flows from an eruption of the Mull volcano long, long before our time. Thank you for joining me on Stava Island. Until we meet again, dear friends, keep safe and be well. <laughs>